The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and welcome to the McGraw-Hill Education Webinar, Supercharging Your Reading Mastery Lessons. This is the first of a series of webinars we'll be offering throughout this school year to support your implementation of reading mastery. My name is Jeff Elmworth, McGraw-Hill Education, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items with with you. Um, this, it, this webinar is being presented in listen-only mode, which means you will be able to hear the presenters, but they will not be able to hear you. However, that doesn't mean you cannot participate. To interact with the presenter, please type in your questions in the question area on the right side of your page. We will do our best to answer all questions at the end of the webinar today. If we do not get to your questions during the live session, we will follow up personally with you within the next 24 hours with an answer. Joining us today as a presenter is Kia Ellis. Kia Ellis is a Senior Specialized Solutions Group Curriculum Specialist for McGraw-Hill Education. She has worked with schools and administrators to manage implementations across the country. She has also conducted sessions at local, regional, and national conferences such as the National Association for Direct Instruction, Association for Direct Instruction, NCTM, and IRA. Ms. Ellis was also an elementary and middle school teacher and impl implemented many direct instruction programs during her years of teaching. Before we get started today, I want to conduct a couple surveys to get an idea of, of, of where you all are coming from and the background you have in your school and your district. When the survey pops up on your screen, please select your answer so we can get an idea, so Kia can have a good idea of who's joining us. The first one we want to ask about is what is your role in the district? Simply go on your screen and click the answer that best exemplifies what you do in your district or your school. Thank you very much. Looks like we have a lot of teachers here. Almost 70% of the group here are teachers with 11% paraprofessionals, 11% other. Great, great feedback for Kia so she can be prepared for this session. The next question I want to ask you, thank you so much for doing that first one. The second question I want to ask you is what levels do you work with the most? If you can please take a look at the screen and select which grade levels you work with most. K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or all levels. Excellent. Looks like we have about 25% are K-1 teachers, but a large percentage of you, almost 60%, are teaching all levels of the program. Thank you so much for your, your participation um, with the surveys and the polls. As we're going through the session, please feel free to type your questions in the questions area as, as Kia is presenting. We'll definitely get to as many as we can at the end of the session. Without further ado, I present you all Kia Ellis. Kia, go ahead. Thank you, Jeff, and good afternoon to everyone. I'm excited that you're here to be with us this afternoon to talk about supercharging your reading mastery lessons. I know school is on the way, you guys are teaching, and so there's a few things I thought we would like to discuss to get reading mastery off to a great start for this school year. Today we're going to take a look at um, how we can get students to be engaged. What are some ways that we can really make sure they're engaged throughout the entire lesson, supercharging not only you for the reading mastery lessons, but also your students. Well, we'll take a look at uh, corrective procedure because we know corrective procedure is so important in reading mastery. As we teach reading mastery to the mastery level, corrective feedback is important for any student making errors. So we'll talk about a little, way, a little bit about how the correction procedure is used in the program and how it changes over time throughout the levels. And then we'll take a look at tracking progress. Some of you may have already given a mastery test or perhaps you've already done a fluency check or maybe even a curriculum-based assessment, and what do you do with this information? How do you know students are progressing towards being successful at reading mastery? So we'll take a look at that as well. But before we get started with that, I have a first grader, and the first couple months have been a little bit rocky, so I know that sometimes attitude plays a big, important role in school, and sometimes attitude towards reading it also affects behavior. So if you want to change attitudes, start with behavior. Key is your screen paused? How many of you are currently are playing the teacher-student game? The teacher-student game is a great way to get your students engaged. 
It's a wonderful way for all students to be engaged minute by minute in the lesson and to really get them involved in what you're teaching versus trying to manage their behavior. It's easy to use. You can play at all levels of reading mastery, and it's pretty simple with not a lot of materials to use to start. Let me share with you how you can get the teacher-student game up and running for tomorrow's lesson. The first thing you want to do is set up your rules. You want to post them somewhere in your room or close to where you're actually delivering your reading mastery lessons. These rules right there here that I'm suggesting actually spell the word star, so they're very easy to remember from your kindergarten level students all the way up to your fifth graders. The first rule, sit tall, sit in learning position is what that really means. And then talk big. I would always explain to my students, this does not mean to yell at me because that hurts my feelings, but actually talk big so that way I can hear everyone in the group responding. Uh, answer on signal is the third rule, which is very specific to reading mastery. And it's also a really great way to reinforce students responding to signal and really making sure group response is well um, uh, organized in the group. So that's a really great rule. And the last one is respect others. You might need to define that for your students because every uh, classroom is a little bit different on what that means. Once you've set up your rules, then you're ready to start playing the game. You'll review the rules with your students. You'll make a T chart. One column will be labeled T for the teacher and the other one will be labeled S for the students. There's really only three rules to playing this game. If everyone in the group, and I mean everyone, is being a star, then you reward the students two points. If one student is not being a star, then you give yourself one point. But I always tell my students, it's just not that easy to beat me. You have to beat me by ten points. So this gets students working together, paying attention, responding to the lesson, and they can now focus on your instruction and not have to worry about managing their behavior. What's great about this game is that you identify the behavior, not the student who may be acting poorly, just the behavior. This way gives everyone an opportunity to fix their behavior on through the lesson. You can simply use your board or a chart piece of paper to keep track of the points. Here's an example of what it may look like in a classroom. You have your rules on one side, your T chart on the other side. This particular group is on their way to being, um, being their teacher. They're doing well in the lesson. I can see the teachers only had to take two points. So it's a great motivator, great way to get all the students actively engaged in minute by minute in the lesson so that way they can receive instruction versus really worrying about their behavior. So if you haven't tried the teacher-student game, I highly recommend it. If you want to supercharge your reading mastery lessons, get your students engaged, and really affect their um, attitudes and change that behavior to a positive one. Now, every teacher always asks me, well, what do they get? You know, my students will ask me that, too. And so I suggest um, give something small. You hopefully it will go to more intrinsic rewards, but you may have to start with something um, extrinsic. I like giving out stickers because it was easy, and my kids typically love to do that. Um, my older students, though, really like having a little bit of free time to sort of socialize. I've given out snacks before. And I've also worked with teachers that use this as a cumulative reward. So they would set a goal for their students, let's just say 50 points, and when they reach 50 points, they will get a bigger reward. So it's a really great way to keep them motivated and engaged throughout the Reading Mastery lesson. I want to ask you guys a question, and so I would like for you to type in your answer in your question box. We're going to talk a little bit about correction procedure, but I'm curious um, of what your response is. How many students need to make a mistake before you use the correction procedure? So type A, if you think more than one in your question box, B, just one, or C, depends on the size of your group. So we'll take a few seconds to see what we have as answers. Okay, it looks like we had a lot of folks that are answering B. This is a stellar group, fantastic. We know that it's very important that all students in the group move forward and make progress in reading mastery. So you're absolutely correct. We really should be using the correction procedure when even just one student makes an error. It's very important that all students have an opportunity to be, uh, perform at a mastery level in reading mastery. On the screen are some general correction procedures that are used throughout all levels of reading mastery. And we'll take a look at how it changes over the levels. But the main steps that are important is model first, lead, test, and then delay test. 
The model is you, the teacher, who will provide the student with the correct and appropriate response. There's suggested wording on here, listen my turn, so your group knows to stop and listen, and you will provide them with the correct answer. Lead is when you're going to say the answer correctly with the students. This could be a sound in level K, this could be reading a whole word in level 1, this could be reading a word to talk word in level 3. The goal is that you're going to be leading them and supporting the group. The next step is test, when the students will then respond by themselves. But one of the most important steps in the correction procedure is that delayed test, starting over, giving the student who made an error an opportunity to fix it while being supportive by the rest of the group, really providing that corrective feedback that's immediate and that student has an opportunity to feel successful again. Let's take a look at the correction procedure through the levels. So this is an example of what you might see for um, level K. Let's go back. So in level K, the correction procedure is often embedded into the presentation book. And if you're just beginning reading mastery, you may have seen this already, or you'll see a correction box there as a reference for you if students make a mistake on an exercise. What I want you to notice is that there is the correction procedure um, steps already built into the presentation book. The model is there, that is the appropriate answer that you would give your students. The lead is there, that you would say that with them, and then the test is there. What you don't see but you will remember to do based on your training is to go back doing that delay test, to go back to the top of the task, or to go back to the uh, front beginning of the row or column. That delay test, remember, is very important and crucial in the correction procedure. We're going to see a video in just a second. Um, with this very exercise that you're looking at right now. This comes from level one. On the video, you'll see a group of students going through the, this exercise and a mistake is made. You will see the teacher model the correction procedure. I want you to pay close attention at how it changed just slightly from what we just looked at from the level K where they would, were the model lead and test. I want to kind of give you a heads up though. The video um, has a little bit of a lag time, so um, just really pay close attention to the student and teacher behavior, but it will be just a little bit of a lag time on the video. During that correction procedure, the teacher went through the appropriate steps. She modeled the answer, but there was one step that was slightly different than what we looked at at the kindergarten level. Remember, this is level one, so things are changed just slightly. When the students made the mistake on then, the teacher actually had them sound out the word. So the model lead test varies just as slightly as students move through the levels. Let's take a look at uh, levels two through five. When students are in their textbook in two through five, they're often reading a list of words during the word attack section. If you teach the upper grades, I'm sure you've seen your student actually doing this, tracking and following along with their finger. We're going to watch another quick video on how the correction procedure just changes just slightly in two through five. I want to see if you can see the difference and then we'll talk about it in just a second. So we're going to watch another group of students. This time it's going to be a second grade class. And this teacher will uh, use the correction procedure and see if you can notice the slight change on what students will do during this uh, example of the correction procedure. Narrow, prison, polite. Oh, that word is polite. What word? Polite. Spell polite. Get ready. 
P-L-L-I-T-E. What word did you just spell? Polite. Yes, polite. Go back to word one. What word? Narrow. Yes, narrow. Word two, what word? Prison. Word three. What word? Polite. Yes, polite. So what you saw this time, instead of sounding out like we saw in the first yeah. grade example, we actually saw the teacher actually having the students spell the word. So you can see that how it changes just slightly as students move through the levels. So instead of students sounding out like they did in the first grade example, students actually spelled the word. What I really liked about this teacher and the correction procedure, she paused just slightly before they got to the word polite, giving the students an opportunity to take additional time to make sure they decode that word properly. So really great strategy to implement in the correction procedure. So the correction procedure is very important in supercharging your reading mastery lessons. It's the place where students have an opportunity to be successful if mistakes are made through that corrective feedback that's immediate for every student. So that's another way to get your reading mastery lessons super charging is making sure you're utilizing those correction procedures even when you hear just one student make an error. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is data management and tracking progress. So I know you've already gone through some mastery tests, some fluency checks, and you have already collected data on your students. And sometimes it's a lot of paperwork to keep track of. With our To Inform resource, you can actually take all of that information that you already currently have and are using to inform what you do next, it can all be lodged in one place through the To Inform data management system. It's a great resource because not only will you be able to implement and import some of the things you're already doing looking at the data, but it actually compile it into a nice, easy to read report, and you get a chance to really look at it very quickly either at the group level, it can go down as far as the student level. So let's take a look quickly at what that looks like. Also, if you have resources for to inform, it's great because it's not just for um, reading mastery. It's for uh, lots of other direct instruction programs as well. This is a great resource to be able to use. So as TwinForm is loading up, there's a couple of things that you can do in TwinForm. You can enter your data, which you have currently for reading, uh, reading mastery mastery tests, curriculum-based assessments, or your fluency checks. You also can look at reports. Let's take a look at reports. I really want to show you how you can utilize these reports very, very quickly. Here you can see very quickly that this um, group has taken a lot of different mastery tests. Let's take a look at how we can look at this in an easy report so that way you can get a chance to see how is this a group doing as a whole. The very first screen you'll see here is all the mastery tests in a percentage, so a very quick glance at how they're performing overall. But if you look on the left hand side, there's quite a bit of reports that you have access to. You have access to curriculum based reports, um, you have access to mastery test reports, as well as fluency. Let's take a look at the Mastery Test Trends report. This report really allows you to take an overall view of what your students are doing and see trends in their performance. If I look at the top graph of the report, I can see my individual students and how they're performing overall on all the mastery tests. If I hover over just one student, it lets me know their percentage overall. So it really gives me a quick glance at how they're performing. It also lets me know that mastery target line, which is at 90% on the top graph. If I want to look at my entire group and all of my mastery tests and what they've done, I can look at the class results by test. This lets me know the mastery test, one, that my students' overall performance as a whole was 83%. If I look at seven, they did fantastic. It was at 97%. So quickly I can get a good glance at the trends and how they're performing in mastery test. But that's not all. What I like about this is that every mastery test in reading mastery gives you remedies. We want to know, well, what happens if? So if my students are struggling, I have reading masteries provided for me in my teacher presentation book. Then to inform, they're right here for you. They will give you a group of remedies as well as individual remedies. And the one we're looking at here only gave us an individual remedy, and this one gave us a group remedy. There will be occasions where you have both group and individual remedies. So it's a really great, easy way to be able to do those remedies before you continue teaching. Another way to make sure you're supercharging your lessons that every student's at mastery um, at all times. 
You also can look at daily lesson progress, which is nice because you can see how many lessons you are completing in a week, which is also great for administrators to see, oh, we're really getting in uh, one lesson a week and the students are performing at that mastery level. I wanted to share with you one other report, which is the individual report. You can look at an individual report of any student. And what this does is it really breaks down how the student is performing overall. It tells me how they're performing as far as attendance, which sometimes is a good indicator of how they're performing in their, um, inside the class. It also tells me how they're performing on their independent work. It lets me know their fluency progress as well as their curriculum-based assessment progress and their mastery test. So all the pieces that I need to know about a student are right here in this one report. I'm able to export this report and print it out, share it with parents, share it with my colleagues, with my administrators. So it's a really great way to have all of your data in one place. So tracking the progress for any student at one at a given time using to inform. Um, I know that sometimes you're like, well, how do I get this? And so I want to share with you one way that you can actually look at to inform if you don't have this resource, and that is by looking at our demo account. So if you have a pencil or paper, uh, pad of paper, or you're able to take a quick screenshot, I'm going to sh show you where you can go to to actually take a look at to inform to see if this is something, a resource that will be benefit to you to help supercharge your lessons. If you go to the website that is on the screen, um, connected.mcgraw-hill.com, it'll take you to a Connect Ed page, and this is where you can log in. If you enter the username DI user, and the password, DI1234, then you'll get a chance to actually see samples of to inform, not just with Reading Mastery, but with other direct instruction programs as well. It's a great resource to see if this is a resource that will be helpful for you at your school site to supercharge your lessons for Reading Mastery. So that's one way to supercharge your lessons by the teacher-student game, getting all your students engaged, by making sure you're really implementing that correction procedure appropriately, but, and also using your management and tracking progress. But you also can find us on social media. So if you like to follow us or find us on Facebook, you go to Facebook and you find SRA Direct Instruction from McGraw-Hill, and what you'll see there is posts from teachers, Post from us about good tips. You'll see pictures of classrooms. It's a great way to be a part of a direct instruction community. And Jeff, later on, will tell you how you can actually win a prize if you go find us on Facebook and post something that you've learned today um, in our session. So it's a great resource for you to also use that in social media. If you uh, like to tweet, you can find us on uh, Twitter as well. And we love hearing positive stories uh, across the country with Reading Mastery. It would be great if you tweet out some successes of how you're doing in the classroom. Um, maybe all of your kids were at Mastery today, or they beat you in a student-teacher game. There's nothing too small. We love hearing about all the successes that are happening with Reading Mastery. And finally, you can also find us on YouTube, which is great because there's also wonderful videos to watch, but sometimes it's great when we see something, um, a visual. So find us on YouTube as well. So I hope today was um, informative and gave you a little bit of a few ideas on how to continue to um, use your Reading Mastery lessons and supercharging them just a little bit. If you're not playing the teacher-student game, you can actually start that tomorrow, introduce it to your students, and you'd be amazed at how much they'll be engaged in the lesson. And your cor correction procedure, always making sure you're going back and referring to those basic steps, and the most important is that delayed task, starting over, giving that student who made an error the opportunity to be successful. And we love it if you would use our to inform to really help you track progress and manage all the data that you're already collecting um, on your students. I want to stop here just for a second and have, uh, we can answer some questions and I want Jeff to share with you how you guys can um, earn a prize by finding us on uh, the social media outlook of Facebook. Hey Kay, I had a question from Stephanie. She wanted to know what programs we're um, all using, they're all into Inform. It's not just Reading Mastery, right? That's correct. Either it's Reading Mastery, there's Corrective Reading, um, there's Early Interventions in Reading, there's Read to Achieve. There's a lot of direct instruction programs that utilize the to inform data management system. Do we have mm -hmm. other questions? Thank you. you had a, there was a follow-up to that. Um, someone was asking about is to inform an app 
Um, and we were just explaining that it's not, we had just told them online, it's not an app, but actually a data management system that's accessed via the web and can be purchased via a one-year and a six-year license. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, that's a great clarification. Mm -hmm. Trying to see if I see any more questions yeah, up there. I have one. You have one have, more? Yeah, I have another one here. Um, this is from Kim, and she's asking, she saw that you had Reading Mastery grades 2 through 5, uh, and is this very similar to corrective reading, which is what she uses with her students in grades 3 and up? So can you maybe talk about the difference there? Sure. So um, corrective reading is it's also a direct instruction program. One of the main differences is it is an accelerated program. So mm -hmm. although Reading Mastery and Corrective Reading utilizes a lot of the same techniques and strategies and pedagogy, Corrective Reading was designed to accelerate their learning. So in Reading, Ma Reading Mastery, you're teaching one year, you're getting one year's growth. But Corrective Reading, because they're older, it was designed for the older reader. The goal is to close that achievement gap quicker and faster, so you're getting two years growth in one year's time. So that you will see similarities, but that print, the main difference is that corrective reading was designed for the older student and to accelerate their learning because they're already behind. Okay. That was a great question. Yeah. Um, you've got another, another one on here. Um, okay. question from Lori is how long does each lesson take? So I guess you could divide that into reading mastery K1 and 2 through 5 for. Oh, great question. So if you're using all three strands with the reading strand, language strand, and literature strand, the K-1, I would say, you know, it could be up to 90 minutes, um, and then a little bit longer depending on your group size and your student's mastery for your two through five. If you're using individual strands, for instance, we have some schools that use just the reading strand for intervention, um, and then you're talking about a little bit less, maybe 30 to 40 uh, minutes for a reading mastery lesson. Okay. Another great question. They're all yeah. fantastic. And at the end of the day, too, I mean, that's fantastic. You guys are uh, still um, uh, participating. Thank you. We have a few more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have one from Angie, and her question is, can students sit at a U-shaped table for reading mastery? They sure can. The main thing, um, Angie, you want to make sure that they can see the presentation book if they're in K-1, um, and that way you have an, every student can see it, then that's fine. If it's the older students, two through five, as long as you're able to manage them, I use the table to decide. Okay. And then I have another one on top of that one. Um, we can answer this. Uh, I think Joe is asking if we have video clip training for self-contained special education classrooms where you have a group of two to four students on four different lessons. Um, I can answer that just regarding the teaching tutor that you are showing clips from. Um, there's a variety of different types of setting on that teaching tutor. In some cases, you'll see very small groups of special education students and then on other video clips, you'll see where there are um, larger classrooms and setups with general education students. So we do show a variety on both of the teaching tutor um, professional development series. And then we have another one. Um, it's up here. Hang on, Kia. Okay. <laughs> You're kind Kia. of shuffling around. Lori had a good question about the mm -hmm. orthography. Can you talk about the orthography for a second? The, the sure. Break. The orthography. Um, the orthography in a level K and then one is really designed to uh, teach students one symbol, one sound. So it's really a great um, scaffold for students. So, for instance, when students are learning TH, they often you know, don't know how to pronounce them. So we combine those to make it one symbol, so that therefore now becomes one sound. We also um, do a lot of scaffolding in the orthography for vowel sounds, so giving students a strategy to be able to read a word very quickly. And you'll probably notice if you're teaching level K and you're new to reading mastery, you haven't seen capital letters. Well, a lot of times for students, it can be confusing, so capital letters begin to get introduced in level one. But the orthography really is designed as a way to be able to teach more sounds and be able to blend more words quicker and faster and more efficiently um, for students. So really by the 100th day of school, students in kindergarten reading mastery level are reading 
more than a lot of students in other ways because of that orthography. So it's pretty amazing and powerful. I actually use Reading Mastery with my son. He's in first grade, and so that was, he was already reading by the time he was midway through in kinder. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's really a great scaffold for the students. And you'll be amazed at how much they are able to read very quickly. All right, we do have some more questions, but we unfortunately are out of time. So those of you that have questions that are in the queue that we see them and you can keep on typing them, we promise to get back with you in 24 hours with a direct answer because there are some really good questions in there. I just don't want to want to respect your time and keep you guys um, within the, the time limit we set for you. Uh, but I do, on behalf of McGraw-Hill, I want to thank you all for joining us for the webinar today. Um, Kia did mention uh, the, the Facebook incentive. If if you if you want if you learn something great at this session that you want to share, please go to our Facebook page, the SRA Direct Instruction, and post something you learned from the session um, on that page. We will be giving out a gift card to the first five people that post something they learned from this session on that page. So please um, do that for us. We'd appreciate it. Um, we also want to invite you to the next session. We will be having webinars like this every month to help you with your reading mastery implementation. So um, the next one will be November 5th, and we'd love for you to come. When you get your feedback email tomorrow, there will be a link not only to download a link to this presentation, uh, to download a copy of the presentation, but also give you links to register for the next session. Same time next month. Um, it will be focusing on assuring mastery in your reading mastery lessons. So again, I, I do want to thank you for attending on behalf of McGraw-Hill. Uh, we will be sending a follow-up email to the link to the, to say, the recording and the presentation. Also, as you exit the webinar today, a survey will open up, and we would appreciate your feedback to help us improve and plan future webinars. If we did not get to your question, like I said, we'll get back to you individually. And if you have any other questions about this webinar, please feel free to email me at jeff, J-E-F-F, dot omer, O-H-M-E-R, at mheducation.com. Thank you so much again for joining us. We appreciate it and look forward to seeing you next month. Have a great weekend.